Hello, I'm Anushka Astana, political editor at The Guardian. Thank you for watching again this week. We have just had PMQs in Parliament, and I know I keep banging on about it, but we're going to have to talk about Brexit again because it's a very big day. We are going to get the final vote in the House of Commons on the Brexit bill. And I'm joined by the Conservative MP, Jean Penrose, who's the MP for Western Supermare, because I think you've got quite an interesting tale to tell, which is that you campaigned passionately. Pretty passionately. Pretty passionately Pretty for Remain. Yeah. And you lost, um, as did all the others who campaigned for Remain. You're very much going to be voting for Article 50 tonight but also on top of that you are actually part of a group of conservative backbenchers which when they set it up some people might have said it was the head-banging brexiteers getting together how did they get you on board explain it to our um, viewers who ask questions all the time and i will put them to john or answer them myself well, i'm not sure they call themselves headbangers but they were kind of the original brexit rebels in pre before the referendum happened but basically i think an, an awful lot of us have concluded that even though you know, someone like me was a Remainer. I'm a Democrat first and foremost, in the same way as I have to accept the result of a, of a general election, even if I'm, not, I'm on the losing side, I kind of got to accept the result of the referendum too. And, and so most people, not everybody, but most people are now coming to the conclusion that we've got to go with this, we've got to do it as well as we can. And part of that, I think, is trying to bind both Britain as a society, but also on a smaller scale, the Conservative Party back together again, and you know your, your your viewers will will know that it was a quite a divisive referendum campaign. It split up families, it divided friends, um, and so within the Conservative Party, this group is just trying to say, look, we want to you know re-glue ourselves back together again. This was Brexit or Central. This group which we're talking about, they said no. They're now part of the new establishment. They've won, um, and they want to make sure that people like me feel welcome and that we can we can sort of make the best of it and work together properly. So that that's the intention. That's the aim. Um, so far it's working okay. Okay, so I really like some views and some questions on that point. Should people who back remain accept the democratic result and get behind it? Now your group is called the European Research Group and you have the support of something like 130 Conservative mm. MPs. Mm. What is it that you are trying to achieve? Are you on the same page as some of those Brexit supporters that you're talking about when it comes to Theresa May's deal? Uh, broadly speaking, yes. I mean. The what, what has happened is that the whole terms of the debate has changed since the referendum deal. Um, the people who were the rebels are now the establishment and, and sort of everything's been turned upside down. But what it does mean is that um, Theresa May's speech when she addressed party, Conservative Party conference back in the autumn and she laid out the approach she was going to take. That's now been had more flesh on the bones in the white paper. That's what I think we're trying to unite behind. That's what we're trying to make sure is delivered. And that's what we're trying to say, look, if you do it this way, It'll, it'll persuade more people and it will also be in the country's interest. So there's well, that opportunity. What Patricia Morgan, who is watching, hi Patricia, says is there isn't a plan. Is there? You can respond to that. But also, Gilks, Wenders, people aged over 45 sold out those under 45. I mean, there is an argument there. Had 16 and 17 year olds been able to vote, we might have had a different result. Oh, I see. Well, I'll, I'll, take, the, I'll take that last point first if I can, which is that um, yes, we could have messed around with the franchise for the referendum. Um, the, the reason why nobody changed it was that the moment you start fiddling with the franchise for a referendum, particularly on something as important as this, is that one side or the other is going to say, hang on, you're trying to fiddle the result. Well, so everyone we said, said that anyway. Well, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's much harder to argue with fiddling the result if it's the same franchise that we use for every other general election. No special deals, no one gets a special, special cut one way or another, and that makes it um, as fair as we possibly can. That she's absolutely right, of course, that younger people um, voted Remain um, and the older you are, the more likely you are, there are plenty of people who were in their 70s who voted Remain too, but the more likely you are to have voted to leave. So that, you know, that's what I was saying about it divided society, it divided families, both between generations. Did it divide your family? Uh, no, actually it didn't, but I, I think it's quite Remainers. unusual. We were are they all okay with you being uh, yeah. we're, we're, all, now? we're all Democrats too, yeah. <laughs> you all accept the result. Um, you simply cannot ask 8% of the population, according to Miriam, to accept the decision of 52%. It's such a binary issue. And she's absolutely right. It is a binary issue. That's what referendums are, I'm afraid. Was it a mistake to go there? Well, it, it, was, in the, it was in the election manifesto. So, I mean, I, I got elected on a, mass, on a manifesto that said uh, we will hold a referendum on membership of the EU. I think it would have been, it would have been kind of hard to, to, to sort of back off that, having got elected on that basis. 
but she's absolutely right. You know, referendums are binary by their, you know, by definition, they are. And, but that does mean that you then end up with having to go with the answer in the same way as if you if you have a two-party system. It's less of a two-party system nowadays than it used to be. If you have a two-party system and one side wins, they form the government, the other side doesn't. And how do you do that while taking into account the views of the 48 percent Well, and that, that's the point, isn't it? That um, what we need to do now is to come up with something which not everybody in the 48 percent will be able to live with. And probably when we get an eventual deal, there may be some people on the 52 percent who whose expectations it doesn't quite match and they're a bit disappointed too but we've got to come up with something which both the country as a whole can live with but also inevitably because it's a deal with EU 27 the other 27 countries in, in Europe that they can live with too so it's going to be a compromise for all of us and some of the 48 percent are going to say actually I can live with this and others are going to say that's outrageous and there'll probably be people on the 52 percent who will feel the same as well. Okay, so tonight you're going to go through with your Conservative um, colleagues. There's mm -hmm. probably not going to be much of a rebellion from the Tories, but probably just not. last quick question. At the end of this process, when we actually know what the deal is, do you still think that you're going to be on the same page as, say, Bill Cash, who is someone who has been an arch Brexiteer for as long as anyone can remember? I, I think if we get a deal which is in line with what the Prime Minister said, so it makes sure that the European Court of Justice judges don't have a say over Britain anymore and that we get to decide who comes in and out of, uh, of Britain, how many of them we decide there should be, but we make the decision, then at that point I think pretty much you know, everybody in the Conservative Party will be able to get behind that. Um, and I hope that an awful lot of other people will too. But the question is, you know, what kind of a deal are we going to get? We've got two years to find out and two years of negotiating to come. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a compromise in the end of the day. Fantastic. John Penrose, thank you for joining thank us. You. I think we'll turn the subject to Labour in a minute, but thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate it.